The next thing that we're going to do in our analysis is think about the internal forces that are involved. We need to diagram sh and show those internal forces. And the easiest way to do this is to break up the diagram into its pieces. And the pieces that we are going to choose, <coughs> we're going to choose to break it up. We can choose however we want because we know that since it's a static system, that forces, um, there has to be an equal and opposite reaction force to any force. We know that that's true at any point inside the truss. So we can make a cut inside the truss anywhere we want. And the easiest place to choose to cut the truss up is separate the beams and the points. So we're going to say now we have just points floating off in space and the beams that would go in between. <coughs> now we're going to draw and label the internal forces inside all of our members. First, we'll let's talk about the forces that the beams experience. We don't know for sure whether they're in compression or tension. So to start the problem, we'll always assume that all members are in tension. We know that this isn't true, but as we work through the math, the signs will tell us um, which ones are in tension and which ones are in compression. So starting with the assumption that all are in tension, there's a pulling force on the ends of the beams. So force AB, which is the force, internal force in the beam between A and B, is pulling on the ends of that beam. Now there's an equal and opposite force that's experienced by the pins at A and B that is pulling on the pins. So it's equal and opposite to the axial force along the beam. So we can draw them as arrows pulling the pins in the same, in the opposite direction as the the axial force of the beams. So um, we can do this for all of the other beams and joints as well. Show their axial forces on the beams and the reaction forces at the pins. So in the next step in our truss analysis, we have to write the force balance equations at each joint and solve for the unknowns. Now what we want to do to do that is we're going to go joint by joint and solve for the equations around, or solve for the unknowns around each joint. So what we want to do to do that is we're going to create a free, free body diagram for each of the joints. And it's best to start with the joint where we have only two unknowns. And for our problem, that is, uh, is point A. The reason that we want to start with two, uh, a joint where there are two unknowns is because we can write two equations and we know that if we have a system of two unknowns with two unqua equations, then we can solve that system. So we'll take away the members and show the reaction forces, force AB, at each of the joints, and force AC at the <coughs> at points A and C, and then do the same thing with, uh, with the beam between B and C, and show those reaction forces at the pins. So now we have three free body diagrams of each of the joints, and we can go ahead and uh, start to solve our problem. Again, we make sure to understand that we have a coordinate system where we consider anything pointing up to be a positive y direction. Anything pointing to the right is positive x direction. Let's start with solving at joint A. So in order to do this, we write two equations. We write a force balance equation for the x direction and a force balance equation for the right y direction. So in the x direction, we can sum up those forces, and we know that they have to equal zero. So forces in the x direction, we see we have F1, which is 100 newtons, but it's pointing to the left, so we're going to call that negative. And we have FAB, but that's pointing to the left and down, 
So we need to figure out its x component. And we can do that by thinking about or remembering back to the measurement of the, the um, truss triangle and the ratio of the horizontal or x side to the hypotenuse times force AB is going to give us the x component of force AB. And that's, yeah, so that's 1 over square root of 2. Similarly, in the y direction, we have a down force in force AC, so minus force AC, and then a downward direction y com component of force AB, minus force AB times 1 over square root of 2. Again, that's giving us the y component because it's the vertical part of our truss over the hypotenuse of our truss. So solving our first equation, we get that FAB is equal to minus the square root of F1. That's just algebraically manipulating this equation. We can plug in for our known force 1 and calculate, and we get that FAB is equal to negative 141 newtons. Now this is interesting, so we have a negative here. That tells us we assumed the wrong direction for FAB. We as when we assumed uh, for our, our force diagram, we assumed that AB was in tension, but this is telling us it was it's actually in compression. Solving the second equation, we get force AC is equal to minus force AB times 1 over square root of 2. We can substitute in for FAB because we solved for it up here to just make our math a little bit easier. That means that we can cancel out the square roots of 2 and the signs also cancel and become positive and we get that FAC is equal to F1. So FAC is equal to 100 newtons. And we assumed correctly there that shows us that um, AC, the beam AC, is in tension. So let's go ahead and solve at joint C. Um, again, we write forces, or have to write our force balance equations. Um, here are our reaction forces, FBC and FAC. The sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to zero, and the only thing in the x direction here is FBC and it's pointing in the negative x direction. So, but that doesn't, uh, oh, and then, uh, so again, we are going to write the same equation for some of the forces in the y direction. That is, <coughs> we have FAC pointing up, so it's positive, and FCY, we've assumed, is positive also, pointing up. Solving the first equation, we see that FBC is zero, so there's no force in the beam BC, between BC. Um, solving the second equation, we just al algebraically manipulate that and plug in for FAC, which we've already solved, and we get that FCY, the reaction force, external force at CY, or at point C, is negative 100 newtons. Again, this is um, telling us that that negative sign is telling us that we've assumed incorrectly um, an up direction at C. So the force is actually in uh, the down direction. It's a, it's a pulling force instead of a pushing force. So finally, we look at joint D to solve for our final unknowns. We still write our same two equations. Um, again, let's keep in mind the structure of our truss and the measurements of our truss. So in our x direction we write that um, some of the forces in the x direction are FBX, you can see that's our horizontal force, reaction force, and we add to that FAB times 1 over square root of 2. This is resulting from the horizontal component ratio to the um, hypotenuse. Plus, there's a reaction force, FBC, 
inside, or sorry, an internal force, FBC. So that's all of our X's, X forces. And then we sum in the Y direction. We get FBY, our normal force at B, plus FAB times 1 over square root of 2. So solving the first equation, we can manipulate it since our FBX is what we want to solve for. We get FBX is equal to minus FAB times 1 over square root of 2 minus FBC. <coughs> so we already have solved for FAB and we can just substitute that in. And we know that FBC is 0. So our result from this equation is that FBX is equal to 100 newtons. And because it's positive, we know that we made the assumption correct for its direction. Solving the second equation, we have that um, we can manipulate that to show that FBY is equal to negative FAB times 1 over square root of 2. Again, that is sort of the same calculation as above, and we get that FBY is equal to 100 newtons. So now let's... Uh, rewrite our truss diagram so that we can see all the forces that we calculated and their correct directions. So here's FBY of 100 newtons pointing up, FCY of 100 newtons actually pointing down because we have a, um, a member in tension here. And we have FBX pointing to the right. We also have our internal forces of FAB. We found out that that's 141 newtons and it's in compression. FAC is 100 newtons in tension and then FBC is zero. So <coughs> whether we could intuit that or not, our following through with all the equations and the math gives us the right directions and magnitudes of, of our, all of our forces. So let's talk about a square truss. First we draw all of our external reaction forces and you can see here we've got FBX and FBY horizontal and vertical because this is a um, a pinned or a, a movable point and at FC or at C we only have the normal force because um, there's no horizontal force with that being on rollers. Now we have to decide okay is this statistically determinant? Can we solve this system? Are our number of equations equal to our number of unknowns? So we calculate 2 times the number of joints which is 2 times 4 is equal to 8 and then we're going to add up our beams. The number of beams we have are four, and the number of reaction forces we have is three. So four plus three is seven, and those are not equal. Eight and seven are not equal. So we have a greater number of equations than unknowns. That means that our system is unstable, and actually are, there are many different uh, solutions to the system of equations. So we can kind of see this intuitively that if we're pushing with a force at A, that member AD is the only member that can push back. Well, there's no counter force on the other side of D to counter that horizontal push. So the result is the truss collapses. In summary, we talked about what compression and tension are in beams. We talked about a simple truss analysis, which is the method of joints. And in order to do that analysis, we defined what statistical dis determinacy is for our, um, our system, whether or not we can have enough information to solve our system. We drew free body diagrams, and we wrote and solved our force balance equations. For class next time, make sure you've answered the portfolio questions. And think about why triangular trusses are used to build large st 